Vanilla Skyrim in 2024 is boring. How dare you? I know you. Yes, you. You've booted up Skyrim and decided to make a new character. This time, you either tried a new build that you saw on YouTube, or went the classic stealth archer route and made a joke about it. Haha, <laughs> whoops, I'm a stealth archer again, haha. <laughs> that joke is overused at this point and wasn't even funny in 2011. After leveling up a bit, you give up because it's the same stuff over and over again, and again, and again, and again. It's been over a decade, and now you need some variety in your gameplay, and probably your life in general. That's where I, a professional gamer slash loser, come to help you out. We're going to look at some mods that just make my Skyrim gameplay a lot more enjoyable. This is in terms of immersion, variety, and some goofiness for good measure. Just a quick note, I won't be including mods that fix the game and its performance for example, because I like my games like I like my food, full of bugs. Our first mod on the list is one I started using just recently. In my previous video, I was playing in survival mode and was stuck in Winterhold. I got there by carriage, but couldn't take a carriage back to a bigger city. So we have to walk back by foot. This is like the best place to be. What a shithole. Because no matter how hard you try, you can't find a carriage in Winterhold. This is where the expanded carriage service mod comes in. The mod adds carriages to the smaller cities like Dawnstar, Morthal, Falkreath, and even Winterhold. With generic Nords as carriage drivers, this can make your survival mode run a bit more immersive and makes the smaller cities of Skyrim feel just a bit more accessible. If there's ever a survival mode run on this channel again, I'm using this mod. Being poor. No, not the type of poor celebrities talk about. Just know that it's your mindset and your thinking like a f***ing loser. A different kind of poor. If you've ever tried out trading your loot in Skyrim with some lucky vendor, you'll know how quickly broke every vendor becomes. To solve this little issue, I use the mod Rich Skyrim Merchants. This mod multiplies the money of any merchants or innkeepers. You as the player can also choose whether you want them to have twice, five times, or even ten times more gold. This mod is also linked to your perk tree, your master trader perk to be exact, and you can also set how much money this perk can give you. No more broke vendors. Okay, so this next mod is just essential for your Skyrim playthrough. It's immersive, lore accurate, I can't play without it. Breastfeed- <laughs> Breastfeeding by any woman- <laughs> Breastfeeding by any woman shout. This mod is an absolute must if you want to have an enjoyable Skyrim playthrough. It adds a ton of world building, fills in the gaps in some quest lines, and Skyrim's story in general. It finalizes any character build you make, whether it's a vampire lord, a samurai, or even a stealth archer. And it just fills this void that the game has before you install this mod. A shout is added to your powers list, and you can use it on any female NPC. Th th this is an absolute must, guys. Trust me. Now obviously I can't show this mod on YouTube, but you guys can at least watch the bugged version where it didn't start the animation properly and just merged me and another NPC together. Welcome to the center of the world. Oh, let me just drop everything to help you. Have you met my dear brother, Eriker? The man's as trustworthy as a Khajiit goldmonger. Whoever want to replace those old rags, stop by Radiant Raymond. What I also found hilarious about this mod was that it has a short description. It just has the word milk. <laughs> If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I've completed some really bad quests. One of those quests is the one where you collect stones. These little f***ers are scattered across Skyrim, and this nifty little mod adds markers to each stone, so it's no longer a guessing game, and you can actually finish this quest without being so angry. Not that I was angry. Okay, I was a bit angry. The mod is so simple and so effective, and it's probably the first mod I ever downloaded for Skyrim. I'm guessing that even the people from my audience who don't mod downloaded this beauty. This is probably the most famous follower mod for Skyrim. Our main guy is Inigo, who has over 7,000 recorded voice lines with unique world and NPC interactions. You can find him in Riften Jail, where he imprisoned himself. All you need to do is read a guard's note, which leads you to finding Inigo's jail cell key. After some pretty fun dialogue, I knew you would be coming for me, so I waited. Are you going to kill me or not? And when you decide he's your new best friend, you can use him as a follower, and you can go on tons of adventures together. One great feature of this mod is that you can always know where he is. He gives you a map marker that points to him at all times. Where are you, Inigo? There. See, I have placed myself on your map. 
if we find ourselves separated, all you need to do is look me up. And when you want to part ways, he just sits in his rift and jail cell again. If you need backup, I will be in my cell. Repenting. I love this guy. And I plan on making some content with him soon. Are you a criminal? I know you are. You play Skyrim. I know what kind of man you are. But beware, because in the eyes of the guards, you're sus. Well, at least thanks to this immersion mod. The vanilla guards are pretty stupid, to be honest. So what does this mod do? Well, if a guard sees you sneaking, he'll get suspicious of your behavior, and he'll start following you around. This can make stealing stuff a bit harder, and in hindsight, I'm really happy I didn't use this mod while stealing every item in Skyrim. Sneaking isn't the only sus thing you can do, as drawing a sword is also enough for the guards to follow you around. I like this mod, because it makes the guard NPCs just a bit smarter, but I can understand it being almost too annoying at times. The next two mods solve some dragon issues I find annoying. It's the talkative dragons mod and the block random dragons mod. Fighting dragons in this game is tedious for me, so blocking them from randomly spawning is great, as I can freely roam Skyrim, especially its smaller cities, and I don't have to worry about a random dragon swooping in and killing important NPCs. The only dragons you'll ever meet are the ones placed at specific locations, such as dragon lairs or quest areas. I usually use this mod when I don't plan on using shouts with my build, or once I've finished the main quest line, as it adds immersion, and at that point, I usually don't need as many dragon souls. I like some more immersion in my game, and making the dragons roast you while you fight them is the logical way to go. It makes them feel more like intelligent creatures instead of the soulless flying flesh they seem to be in vanilla Skyrim. Now, The next mod on our list is the breast job mod for special edition, this time with a fixed height. I, I, I can't show this on YouTube. This is one of those mods that's a must for Skyrim. If there's anything you should take from this video is that you should really download this mod. I mean, it's basically a DLC at this point. Hi, I'm the narrator from the previous video and TCD really needs to put his pants back on. So in the meantime, I'm going to use an analogy to best describe this Skyrim expansion. Imagine a forest with two big mountains. Thanks to this mod, you can actually use a giant log of wood and place it in between these two mountains. TCD didn't pay me enough to describe anything else. Let's move on to the next mod. Do you have friends? Well, if you do, you can play Skyrim together. Bored of the basic intro? Well, not anymore. If you ever feel alone in this game, you can always create an insane character and goof around with someone else. This mod is full of bugs, but considering Skyrim isn't even a multiplayer game, the modders have done a great job. I recommend just one person completing quests, as it makes it a bit more immersive. The NPCs in this game really aren't ready for more Dragonborns, to be honest. As I've said before, I really like immersion, so I also add the immersive patrols to my mod list. This makes the world a bit more alive, as you can meet more Imperial, Stormcloak, Thalmor, Dawnguard, and many more patrols around Skyrim. These patrols can even interact with each other, which makes the world feel so much more alive. It's worth noting that the Civil War questline influences this mod a lot, as the patrols can attack you depending on the side you choose. Also, completing the Civil War questline can disable some patrols entirely. Our next mod is the Religion Overhaul. This mod, sadly, doesn't add Scientology to Skyrim. So what do you say, we need to clean this place up? Huh? Yeah! You're all disappointed by this, I know. But it adds an interesting expansion to the deity system. Not only does this mod add new deities, but also adds effects your belief system has to the game. Depending on your selected god, you're granted new powers and effects. You can find new shrine locations with map markers all across Skyrim. The mod also adds a new mechanic, which lets you pray to a selected god and receive a blessing. Pilgrim also adds two separate perks into the game. One in the Conjuration Perk tree that governs the Daedra and evil gods like Sithis, and the other in the Restoration Perk tree that governs the Aedra and the not-so-evil gods. This mod is one of my favorites, and it's amazing for role-playing Skyrim. Our next mod is the Birmingham Mud Crabs. I don't know if you've ever been to the UK, but this is pretty accurate. If you kill a mud crab, he shouts at you. This way, you'll get the Birmingham experience, and you don't even have to leave your room. 
Oh my god. It's coming. It's here. Oh my god. It's coming. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's here. Yay. No way. Let's go. Let's go. It's here. Oh wow, I can't believe Listen, I'm not proud of this. Okay, I am proud of this. And it had to be done. Some of these little kids are just beyond annoying. And making them unkillable, when you also make them annoying, is just stupid. So there's a solution. What are you looking at? I'm not afraid of you, you know. Even if you are my elder. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. You're new around here, so I'll go easy on you. But don't get on my bad side. Next on our list is the Mage Archetype mod. You've probably seen me use this in some of my past videos. The mod adds a lot of new fun spells that can be used in various ways. They're sold by vendors, but if you're lazy, you can just kill the Riverwood chicken. Hopefully, your chicken doesn't get stuck in the ground. Some of these spells are aggressive destruction spells that deal tons of damage and absolutely melt enemies. Others are powerful summons that can be used to, again, absolutely melt enemies. There's also spells that hurl NPCs into oblivion and spells that can curse and debuff your foes. We can forget some powerful healing spells and of course the ability to summon your own spirit clone. For those of you who like stealth shadowy builds, there's a variety of spells to choose from as well. Some of them even drain your enemy's health to the point of being unkillable. There's a lot more this mod can offer. But I'll let you discover this for yourselves. This mod is just amazing for diversifying your mage builds or simply creating new builds from scratch. I couldn't recommend this enough and let's move on to our next mod, which is the addition of Volkahar Knight armor. You guys know I just love vampires, so not having some cool looking armor was indeed very disappointing. Boo Todd. Luckily this mod can solve this problem and adds a variety of modified vampire armor. Once worn in a full set, your character gets a special effect, depending on the armor set. My personal favorite is the red version, and I also love to add the Blood Skull Blade or Ebony Swords to make my vampire look even cooler. I would love to see the Volkahar castle filled with knights that would wear this and could be your followers. Any character who has this armor is just instantly badass. Speaking of badass vampires, marrying Serana is important for the entire province, because if she says no, I'm going off the rails, and it's everyone else's problem now. Once she says yes, and the guy in the temple stops judging you, you can freely move her into your house. This brings us to the last mod of this list. It's the Elden Ring mod. It's actually super fun. You get a complete overhaul of Skyrim, the textures are better, it runs without bugs, and you don't even need Skyrim to install this mod. You just need about 60 gigabytes of free space on your disk, and you're good to go. Look, I even have Wolverine claws. TCD was so proud of that joke, just as he was proud of all of you guys for watching his video. Like and subscribe and get ready for the next video where he tries to beat Oblivion just by touching everyone.